Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to give you guys just a quick update that um, my healing is phenomenal. It really is. It was interesting. You guys have seen the last, I would say, three or four days, me deal with stuff that I have been working through, whether I'm avoiding it because I'm not ready to deal with it, or it just finally came to surface. All of the crap that I had to deal with the last like two years. Okay. So, you know, there are going to be times, no matter when, whether it's on the Julie Juice, in the future, from the past, that there will be mutations from negative pathogenic elements out there in the world. Remember, you're not immune to pathogens. Your body has to, well, I mean, if you are, you can get immune to them, but you're not going to be able to prevent them. Okay. Now you can, you can control your universe to the best that you can to keep things, you know, safe enough for you. But the elements and people and bacteria, they are floating around. Okay? They are. I mean, you don't live in a bubble and you don't sequester yourself away from the world. You have to live in a world that is, everybody has opinions, everybody, everybody is sick. Um, we have elements that are kicking up all over the place. And so your body is always going to take a beating in some way. Now, how you sustain the beating and how you deal with the beating of all of the crazy elements is relative to what you bring to the table. Okay? And so there are some, there are some people out there that will take the beating and take the exposure at all the different pathogens and then find ways to self-medicate to where they don't actually heal from all the different negative elements. And it means everything. But they self-medicate to the point to where they don't even deal with the things that came at them at any point in time. And then what happens is the body adapts to the fact that you didn't deal with something and then it, uh, it adapts, it creates a workaround because now you've just sustained a mutation that you didn't fix. And then you start seeing that manifest physically, mentally, spiritually, which is hormonally, financially. And many are left puzzled of why it is that they've endured so much. And so no matter what, no matter what, you're going to have cathartic moments in your life. And you've seen my cathartic moments the last couple of days because I've had to. You've seen all the crap that I had to deal with. And you saw that I dealt with it and will continue to deal with it in a very constructive manner. And you're going to find when you're on J-Juice and you get your body healed and sealed, yes, you're going to have a cathartic moment. You're going to have an emotional moment because you need to face whatever has caused your mutation. It doesn't matter whether or not you dealt with it. It doesn't matter, you know, that you push it down or you self-medicated, but you're going to have to finally deal with the emotions because, and the mutations. And so the last couple days, when you saw me make those phone calls and all that stuff, you know, you saw that, yeah, I was dealing with a lot of crap, dealing with facing, confronting all the things that was just a nightmare. And they will, they're not a nightmare now. But I think that after that moment, after that moment of doing what I had to do, confronting what I had to confront publicly, because you guys, 
are probably not going to do your healing publicly, but you'll recognize when it happens. And you'll wonder, where the hell did this come from? What triggered? And the universe, I'll tell you what, the universe will trigger you to respond to something that you need to deal with. When you get triggered, it's not something that you're ashamed of. See, that's what I have a lot of people in the, in the empath world. I, have, I had a critic just the other day that actually deleted her comments. And I actually just blocked her right now. Because I'm tired of, of people saying they're on J-Juice. And then any time that I'm going through a healing process, they're getting all pontificating type of like, oh, yeah, I've been dealing with the same thing too. Guess what? When you put something out there, it comes back tenfold. So trying to apply the whole karma type of thing to my situation without actually saying my situation was karmic and that you better be, it's like, in a way it's like saying like, you know, better watch out, you know, when, so, when you go and attack someone or you go and defend yourself, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. That's what she said in not so many words. But she hid it behind, oh yeah, without really saying it, yeah, you know, it comes back even stronger. I have people on my J-Juice that are doing CBD oils. I have people on my J-Juice are such empaths that they'll probably only do a little bit of J-Juice here and there, but they still stay stuck on their platform of, oh yeah, it's all about putting out only positive energy in the world, and if somebody attacks you, you just walk away and that's it. And sometimes you need to. Sometimes it's not the fight isn't worth fighting. And then sometimes the fight is worth fighting, but it's never for somebody else to say whether or not your fight is worth it or not. See, that's what I have been working through when it comes to the J juice is being is realizing the people who are very judgmental in that arena of when you're trying to defend and you're trying to say, hey, this isn't okay, Th these are boundaries being crossed, that it's okay to stand up for yourself. But we have people that don't stand up for themselves. They would rather play the, oh, I'm an empathic to positive. I'm not going to go there because I don't want it to come back. That's actually playing it safe, and that's hiding from yourself. Okay? That's hiding from yourself. And I have gotten rid of a lot of people off my Facebook. I have. Um, because I really can't stand the hypocrisy. Now, I'm not asking everybody to go and expose all of their lessons and their healing on Facebook to prove, and, and they're on JJ's to prove that they are going through the process. But I don't like indirect messages to say, well, maybe you should rethink the way in which you approach this. Because, yes, when you get triggered, the universe tells you. When I had those dreams the other night, on April 1st, the universe told me there was a battle that I need to fight. There's a battle that I need to fight. And so, you know, I'm not going to ignore the universe. My gut right now feels so strong. It's like I was so tired the last couple of days. I was up at one in the morning taking care of some stuff and getting my head in, in the right way. And finally yesterday I, I took a nap. And then, you know, when you guys, and I don't even have to do waterfalls with my drink. When you eat a certain amount of food, whatever it is, I'll tell you what, after that whole release, because I, I can eat food and then a, a few hours later, it comes right out. Okay, I know it sounds kind of gross. Like, why would I talk about pooping? But I've never ate food, and then two hours later, it came out. The same food that came in came out. Usually, it's always like in the next morning, it processes. Like, my system was so slow in processing the food that it would, wouldn't let me eliminate until the next day. So you're holding on to this crap that is toxifying your body for a certain amount of hours, and that does impact you. When you hold on to all those excess waste material, and you could be really skinny too and still hold on to shit. That's why you see mutations in the population, people who are obese and people who are skinny, but you see that they are not very well. 
And it's because they hold on to a lot of shit and it mutates them. So yeah, when after I ate that bunch of food and then I fell asleep because I was so tired, I mean, going to bed at 10, getting up at one, working like 17 hours. And then, and this is two days in a row. Finally, yesterday, my body just like, okay, we can't do it anymore. Go to sleep. So I did, I just got a bunch of uh, vegetable dumplings. <laughs> Ate like 16 type pot stickers. Okay. My favorite food is pot stickers. And took a nap for a few hours. And then my system just said, okay, it repaired. And it wasn't just from the food, it's from a lot of stuff. Like all that crap that came to surface all came out. And then I was left with, just get this, this is what's so amazing. Then I was left with such calm. And then I started thinking more strategically. I started looking, instead of emoting and reacting, I started now planning proactively a lot of different things. And so I can see it even how I respond to posts when people are talking about cures on the internet because I still, I mean, yeah, I've been a little bit sidetracked lately and you all noticed it. But... I still want to make sure that the message never gets diluted. Jelly juice is the answer to humanity. It really, there's no question about it. I, I mean, I know it sounds nuts to those that are still stuck in the system, but that's okay. You can't go wrong with cabbage water and pink Himalayan salt and lactobacillus. You just, you can't go wrong with it. But you're going to have to understand the journey that you must go through. And sometimes you won't recognize the journey. I mean, I had that dream on April 1st. And it's so weird because that's when some crazy article came out. But I had a crazy dream. Some evil looking girl. Look at my ex-best friend from a long time ago. was giving me the evil look. And I'm flying upside down looking at her. Okay? You know, you go and Google the dream meanings on that. And then the article came out. And you guys kind of know what I'm talking about, all of you. You know, I mean, you've seen what I've been going through, right? What I've been focusing on as far as all the tabloids out there, whether they're bloggers or like, you know, the other reporters that have written about me. So that was prophetic to let me know that this was something they needed to deal with as far as all of this controversy out there. And so that's why I'm writing the second book to lay it to rest and so I'm getting all my duckies in a row as far as my book is concerned and other things, you know, to lay all of these crazy ass rumors and fears to rest. Finally deal with it head on. And so, you know, and that's, and that's huge. That is huge. Because I'll tell you what, it, it'd be very easy for me to just ignore it all, which I, yeah, I'm going, I'm not going to go and entertain all that stuff. But I have to address it in a way that makes sense. I really do. And this is going to put the power back in all of your lives because I'll tell you, there's a fear in all the different systems. People have a fear of the government. When you have a fear of the government, then you have no rights because you don't know your rights. And so, you know, and I see it on Facebook all the time, you know, demonizing the FDA and the CDC and the EPA and, and CPS and uh, all these, these government organizations. And I'm like, so w what other choices does a person have when they have people abusing them or victimizing them or children getting hurt by parents who don't know any better? I mean, who is that balancing force? There's got to be. I mean, you look at the ignorance out there. I mean, we're not born knowing what kind of foods to eat. We're not born knowing how the world works. Somebody has to teach us a certain amount of information so we can at least be able to get to a point where we can then start thinking for ourselves. So how that, what that means to a lot of people could be very different. The anti-government people will say, oh, yeah, think for yourself. Don't let the system control you. Is, is following laws and kowtowing to the government 
a really a good way to just, you know, to to live, you know, obeying authority. And I'm just like, you know, people make it sound like, you know, these people who are beautiful people who are on the JJs, beautiful. They're able to get in their car, go to to the store, hang out with their family and friends. And they think that they're a slave to where the way they look at government, it's like obeying. Like, like, like that's an overseer, like they're being whipped that if they don't go and run or walk or do whatever something, you know, whatever that overseer says, they would get whipped. They would get hurt. That's how people come across. But yet they're, they're going to their mailbox unobstructed. They're going to restaurants with all of their activist friends unobstructed, but yet they think that they're in, 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 in imminent danger. And so... I'm just thinking, you know, law and order, there's, there's, law and order is life. That's what it is. And when you're so fearful that there'll be unjust laws to where it's be like a Hitler, where they're going to round up a bunch of people that don't agree with one other person and gas them. Well, that's the reason why America came, well, that's not America, but that's the reason why the UN and the allies. Now, back when I was a conspiracy theorist, I used to think, oh yeah, that's, you know, the, the, the League of Nations turned into the UN and that's the New World Order and that, oh my God. But that's somebody's skewed version of history with a spin. And people take historical events and they spin the story to fit their agenda. And then I'm looking at how people write about me. They take whatever I say on, you know, on Facebook Live or in or whatever I write and all my research that I give out there. They go and take what I'm saying and twist my words to fit their narrative. And so, you know, and I'm like now that I see it, because I'm looking at like all the different tabloids that the celebrities have to go through with the tabloids going and taking screenshots of their face and putting it on naked bodies and saying, hey, we found them in this compromising position and then they sell magazines. And I'm like, you know, the internet and social media and blog sites and reporters and all the different people that are trying to carve out a space for themselves, make money, they do the same thing that these conspiracy theorists that create websites that take history and they spin it to fit their agenda and then people read it and think it's true just like I did, no different than somebody taking what I'm saying that doesn't listen to me on a daily basis and twist my words. And so that's exactly what it is that we deal with in this world is we're always getting somebody's skewed version of the truth and nobody understands that's what actually goes on. And it's just like, and I'm tripping that, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, art imitates life and life imitates art. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the YouTube channels and the podcasts and the Facebook lives, I mean, I'm, I'm, believe me, I, I'm not innocent as far as my contribution to skewing what or taking what I what history and skewing it to fit my agenda, you know, as far as believing in the conspiracy stuff, because yeah, there's always going to be evidence to support your thesis based upon a specific belief system. And so that's when law and order comes into play because people's belief systems and people's perceptions of the truth can get way out of hand and that's why we have to have certain boundaries and parameters to work within or else oh my god you don't want to live in an anarchic anarchist society because it means that somebody's opinion is going to be the rule of the day and we have a lot of people that don't like other people because of their skin color because of their lifestyle because of what they say and so if opinions became rule of law then it would be anarchy and you guys wouldn't be able to go to the mailbox unobstructed because somebody wouldn't like what you wore to the mailbox, you know? So we really have to be thankful for law and order. We really do. You know, it's not just the law of like 
policemen and the courthouses. It's the laws of your body too. Yes, the policemen are the enforcers. And I will never say FTP ever. I mean, I did say it, but I'll never say it in what people, <clears throat> the policemen and the FBI and the CIA and all of those government organizations, people have said that they're corrupt and there's corrupt people in every agency. But I think for the most part, <clears throat> our, excuse me, it's the morning mucus, just so you guys know, my body's releasing all the pathogens that they processed overnight, okay? But the reason why we have these people is because we do have a lot of opinionated people who have skewed versions of the truth acting out their opinions, and that's not okay. Whether they write about it or they act it out use, using you know, machinery or whatever else, we have people that do that. And so that's why we have government organizations to potentially put a stop to it because how can you go walk to your mailbox if you have crazy ass people that are always reacting from their opinions or hormones or they're believing some story that somebody wrote on the internet because that person is trying to make money. This thing with the ads, oh my God, we have little mini TVs. That's what Facebook, I mean, actually, I don't use YouTube in that way to get hits and clicks. I use YouTube in a way to get my information out to people who I have blocked on Facebook because there are people that don't know their boundaries and they want to spew. So I think everyone deserves to have access to the information. Yes, people are taking my videos off of YouTube and then putting it on their channels and then having a commentary about it. And then, the, yes, they get hits and clicks they have ad money i understand but then yes it's also too they are advertising for me in a fucked up way but hopefully you know somebody can see through the bs but some of this stuff which i don't really care about what people say it's what they write is what really is the concern and so that is what you know we have different laws that deal with what people write but that you know but this is this is the way of the world now everybody is going to be able to express themselves unbridled emotions we have parents and children well, have parents that are expressing themselves and acting like judge jury and executioner and basically making their opinions the rule of law. And so what happens is, is there's not many repercussions. That's, and then there, and then there is. So there's a certain amount of repercussions. Like that's why there's community standards. That's why people go to jail on Facebook is because they're taking their belief systems way too far. What are they doing with their belief systems? They're trying to persuade people into thinking that something nefarious is going on and causing another fabrication of the truth. Now, how do we know what the truth is? We won't know what the truth is when it comes to things that we are not actually in the presence of. I don't know what happens in Israel and Palestine. I just read about it. Do I actually know who is the one that triggered this? Yeah, we can go back into history, but it's still all somebody's perception. But it doesn't even matter. It really doesn't. Israel and Palestine will have to deal with themselves. Okay, I'm not going to go and fight Israel and Palestine's battles. Now, if our government decides that they, yes, they want to do that, okay, that's what they do. If they think that they are in, you know, they think it's appropriate. But as soon as we start seeing how things happen on our soil, is then when we have to make changes to our life and then fight if we need to so yeah so you know so yeah we have a lot of parents that are and and adults that are definitely dubbing themselves judge jury and executioner their opinions are the rule of law. Their children are picking up on this. They're going on social media. 
doing the same thing. We have community standards for a reason. People, put, people are put in Facebook jail because they are trying to fabricate more stories and totally skew the truth even more. And so then, thanks, hey Massimo. And then all of a sudden now we have even more of the Tower of Babel if I want to go biblical. So, you know, I'm not going to go to MeWe. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go to MeWe because Facebook is fascist. No, you know, no. You know, I, I don't believe in, in totally toeing the line. I mean, I'm not a mainstreamer, but I'm not like a conspiracy theorist. I don't even know what I am. Because I, I look at like I'm like look at people's Facebooks, right? And and I'm I'm looking at their life and it's a very like it's a very compared to my life, it's very safe and very formulaic and it's like this person not that everybody has problems, but they're living they're they're living between the lines. They're coloring in the lines. Because if they ever went out of the lines at all, at all whatsoever, their community would come down on them and push them right back into the lines again. And so how do you balance out to where you stay within the lines, but you want to expand the lines, not go outside of the lines, but expand the lines, like expanding your capacity, expanding the world's capacity. How do you, and that is probably one of the most difficult things because I've had, I've been dealing with that. How can I expand human consciousness? I guess that sounds so cliche. How do I expand information and have it be looked in a different way without totally going outside the lines and being a crazy ass conspiracy theorist, but still have people question what they already know and maybe explore something a little bit different without going outside the lines and, and that's and and you're seeing how it is I'm struggling with doing that because that balance is difficult but what makes it easier is when you understand the laws okay what makes it easier is when because when, when you understand the laws then you'll see then you'll realize other points of view out there and you realize that because you believe in something doesn't mean it's true, doesn't mean somebody else should believe it. And there are laws put in place to make sure that, that even though you don't know what the truth is, that we don't do things that are going to then violate somebody else's uh, rights or victimize somebody else. And that that is... And that's profound. I mean, it's probably seems like, oh, no, duh. Okay, you know, we're not supposed to victimize other people. But there's so many different ways you can. And not everybody is aware of all the different ways. It's not just hitting somebody. There's so many ways you can injure another person based upon your belief system. And you're seeing it all over Facebook. You're seeing it all over social media. We are injuring each other all over the place because we don't even know the laws. We don't even understand that our opinions are opinions. They're nothing. Okay, everybody has an opinion, but social media has given everybody a venue to go and express their opinions as if it was true. It was a reality. And and myself, let me tell you, I believe it. That's why I turned to Facebook because I needed to express myself. But I think expressing yourself is amazing because then you can hear hear yourself back. That's and I always watch my videos, my own videos. Because then I start listening to myself and I'm like, oh, wow, that, that's something good. Or, oh, I should have said it this way. Or, oh, wow, how would this person with this point of view take what I just said? Would, would they get it? Or would they be like, oh, you know, making fun? And so, you know, my husband said the same. You know, he told me what he did a long time ago with one of his kids was that he would record when they would just go off and yell and be hormonal and then play it back and say, hey, this is what you sound like. You like what you sound like, and and yeah, and that, and that was and that was like wow, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty dynamic for you, husband, honey. But my husband, he has a lot of, of of skills and deep thought that he doesn't always 
say. So when he does say something, I'm just like blown away. So, but that, but see, but that, that makes sense. I mean, when you watch yourself and you understand the law and then you watch yourself and you, and you're aware and you're just self-aware, you start realizing that your opinions don't really mean much. I got a lot of opinions. But it doesn't mean that they're true. It just means they're an opinion. What makes the truth is whether or not it is lawful or unlawful. And when somebody is not very well, still hormonally imbalanced, they will question if the law should exist. So that's why the other day I had an issue with somebody who took issue when I said the law trumps belief systems. And it's and she's been on J Juice for two years, two freaking years, and she still does not believe in the law. And I've been saying, if you don't know the law, you'll believe all the stories. I mean, I've said that a million times. There are laws of the human body, the laws of society, the laws of your immune system. Why would not that be true that the law would trump a belief system? Because some people have belief systems are so fucked up and they will commit crimes because of their belief system. Some won't be committing crazy. I mean, it's all on a scale. I mean, you have little bitty crimes that are like plagiarism, right? All the way to outright murder. But when you think that your belief system should be the rule of law, you're not on J-Juice at the level that you should, and you're blowing smoke up my ass. Because I have went from being a mainstreamer to being a crazy ass conspiracy theorist, anti-government, anti-vaxxer, la 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 la, and you've seen it, it's all over my Facebook, to them being on J-Juice, going through the healing symptoms, finally getting my world balanced, figuring out all of the science that I need to support Jilly Juice, because, you know, where I am today is a far cry from where I was a year ago on Dr. Phil. Okay, so I'm finally now getting to the point of balance. There are still mutations from the last couple years. Like I said, you guys are going to have things come at you even while you're healing that you'll have to heal later. Or if it's something that if you're relatively healed and sealed and you have a mutation of that day, most likely you will deal with that mutation, build up the antibodies, reverse the mutation, fix the mutation, and then you're that much stronger. See, mutations can be strong when you can reverse it. Building up antibodies can be strong as long as they're held at bay. Because now it's like I'm immune to certain things that I would have been more sensitive a while back. So so you're seeing me going from all the way from being mainstream to anti-government conspiracy, anti-vaxxer, holistic, whatever, to now realizing there is a place for everything that I experience. There is no one area, whether mainstream or, or conspiracy theorist, that is better than the other. It was vital to go through it, but not everybody should go through that whole, but it was, that was my journey. My whole point is if I can get you guys to where you don't have to go through my journey and go through the hard act, some of you wouldn't be able to survive my journey because it's pretty aggressive. Okay, but if I can, but this is this was the journey that I went on went on. So if I can go from that from point from that point over there to now where I'm at, where you're seeing me dealing with you see me deal with the things that happened a couple of years ago and You're seeing it. Well, you're seeing how I am right now. I mean, I'm. I'm think I'm pretty calm. I think I'm pretty clear-headed. Yes, Massimo, your belief systems create your perception. Absolutely, and that's why it's so difficult for someone to understand my information. And that, and, and I and I I appreciate that. 
and I'm okay with that. But there are laws that you have to abide by no matter what you believe in and how you express your opinions. Because opinion expression comes out in so many different ways. Some are some have felonies attached to it. Others just simply have, you know, lawsuits attached to it. Whatever it is, it's still it is what it is. There's still an opinion. I mean, there should be a term like opinion expression. No different than antibiotics. There's very benign type of, not really benign, but they're very like less aggressive antibiotics like coconut oil, all the way to like chemotherapy, aggressive chemotherapy. So there's opinion expression from someone just blabbing on Facebook saying, I hate this person, all the way to somebody actually going and doing, committing crimes. And so that's why the law is in place. So that way someone's opinion expression doesn't get out of hand. And then you see people say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I hate the government, but I'll go use the government when I'm in a jam. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? If you're so anti-government, then get off the grid. We wouldn't hear from you because any type of mode of communication is government regulated. You're utilizing government resources when you're on Facebook or Skype or any of those mediums. Okay, so, you know, you only hate the government when it's convenient. I, I, and that, and J-Juice will not let you be a hypocrite. J-Juice will make you be consistent in your belief systems because you will understand if you're not consistent in your belief systems, you come off as a hypocrite and you come off crazy. Well, not really, because some people, you know, who are crazy, who who do who are hypocrites wouldn't think you're crazy they'd be like yeah yeah i believe you or no i mean if you're going to be anti-government then you be should be off of facebook if you're going to be anti-government anti-society off gridder hating everything in our society we wouldn't be seeing you because you'd be living somewhere in the mountains as a caveman naked and afraid So JGs will have you see now balance, understand for the need of government, understand that we have to have certain regulations because we have very mutated people who don't know what the hell they're doing. Opinion expressions get out of hand. When people are taking antibiotics, like you know, I went on somebody's timeline today and I was very polite, of course, but they're like, oh, yeah, why are cancer, you know, why is it, can why is the, the cancer act of something, something, why was that put in place? And then everybody was saying, oh, because they're trying to hide the cure. It's this big pharma trying to, like, you know, dominate the market and do this and do that. And, and I'm just like, no, it's because we have people that don't know what they're doing. And there are so many different antibiotics that are, like, so, that are so, like, chill, like, ant like uh, coconut oil. And then, you have, and then all the ones in between. So then you have like coconut oil and then you have other types of oils. And then you have, let's say like the dandelion, you got all the pills, powders and supplements and the detoxes, the bentonite clays and the heavy metal detoxes using aluminum silicate. And then you have the chemotherapies and the immunotherapies and you have the dandelion root and the garlic and the onions and the turmeric. And these are all antibiotic, all the spices and extracts are antibiotic. And then you have your prescription drugs, your pharmaceutical drugs, like I said, chemotherapy, radiation, and the real, real aggressive antibiotics. Okay? So, and I'm like, no, not everybody can, can afford antibody acquisition. And so when you're dealing with really aggressive, well, yeah, when you're dealing with cures, okay, what, what are cures? Cures are poisons. That's why it has to be FDA regulated. That's why they asked me to go test my drink to make sure it's probiotic. It wasn't antibiotic. That was the whole basis point of the Ohio Attorney General on my case. And they were doing their job. God bless them. Because then I was able to prove that my drink was a probiotic. But there are people that cannot afford to take on high amounts of cannabis. And so you have people that are commenting, oh yeah, cannabis is a cure. Yeah, it is a cure. But not everybody can afford to take cannabis every single day or in the amounts. Because let me tell you, when you get cannabis oil, CBD, 
and you're taking your say you have let's say a cancer you're you you were stage something stage one or you're trying to stop cancer and you don't know how much to take how do you know you don't know it may say okay you know take one drop daily but you're like oh no i'm 250 pounds i need to take like 50 drops and people start abusing it because they think that they need to take more because they're sick and then guess what they accumulate the antibodies yeah they go get a titer test a drug test it'll come up positive when you come up positive on a titer test or a drug test it means you have antibodies that are altering your reality and causing mutations okay when antibodies is because it's a pathogen when something gets created when an antibody gets created it's because it's an antigen antigen creates uh, antibodies that's your immune system that's your immune system trying to protect you but we have people abusing okay and so these cures are poisons when you're taking bentonite clay and kombucha and apple cider vinegar and zeolite and all these things those are pathogens that's antigen it creates antibodies and then it destroys your gut because you have so many good gut bacteria that's being destroyed by all of those antibiotic whether it's from all the way to coconut oil taking large amounts of coconut oil all the way to then radiation and all points in between that's why they have the cancer act where you cannot be the one to say you have a cure unless it goes to the proper FDA processing the proper regulations because the FDA will then say okay you have to do this 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 and this to then say you tested on 200 or so how many different subjects that have so many different diseases so they can see a range of what kind of side effects are going to happen and how fast it works as far as the intention okay so when you take a drug guess what it does it manipulates your hormones when you take a drug it may uh, well yeah manipulates your hormones which means it would like bring a hormone up or then inhibit a hormone probably the one hormone that you probably need yeah like the prostaglandin hormone or the calcineurin neurin hormone the prostaglandin is the one that that has the sensation of pain it aids in the healing process the calcineurin hormone aids in autophagy it actually lets you release that's what actually jelly juice the waterfalls are it's autophagy okay maybe that's how I need to say waterfalls because everyone's gonna say oh yeah it's diarrhea okay well that's the that's the easy go-to diarrhea but diarrhea is just a manifestation of the body going through something but what you make it mean is the difference between that so let's just call it autophagy because that's what it really is when you say diarrhea it means that you're poisoning your body with something and the body's trying to let the probiotic no that's the total wrong context diarrhea is based upon pathogens that just entered your body and the body is taking all the minerals electrolytes and the water in your body to get it out and then you're left depleted having to go to the hospital go get rehydrated or electrolytes no with autophagy the body's finally able to release the uh, the the pathogens disassemble the mutated cells and let your body release it that's what the jelly juice is it basically activates your immune system the way it needs to the proper way not taking these freaking antibiotics okay so yeah the FDA needs to be there or all you guys would be dead that that hate the government because you would be taking because you would all of these crazy like Dr. CB or other people would then still be flourishing giving you urine or giving you all this other stuff all these antibiotics and you'd be taking it because you're like oh yeah Dr. CB so wonderful he has like an herbalist and he's doing this he's saying this he's he's, he's uh, curing AIDS and all this stuff but he's really giving you poisons so that's why they were on his case so yeah the FDA has a place will I ever the trigger the FDA no because my stuff is probiotic and I'm not selling a product okay I mean I'm watching these commercials on TV and they're saying yeah probiotics gut health all oh, you have so many millions and trillions of, of bacteria and I got my juice tested it's a probiotic and then you have these people that are just like oh Jillian stuff is so dangerous and you're just like oh my god oh my god you don't even watch do you not even watch TV I mean you're a mainstream but you don't, you don't understand probiotics so you think the only probiotics are developed in a lab right you don't think that these these labs are based in mother nature yeah they are 
Mother Nature created these labs. Guess what? It took a human who's made of the universe, made of Mother Nature, who then took all the different elements, constructed in a way to where they put a hammer and a nail and built the drywall and all this stuff, and then shaped the different metals to make a microscope so you can look through to figure out how then to see and test for probiotics. It happens in nature like when, when things are fermenting. In nature, like fermented fruit, though fermented fruit is not good for you because it's, it's, it's uh, fermented sugar and sugar feeds cancer, maybe in tiny, tiny bits. But if you're drinking fermented fruit all the time, you're going to throw the balance off your body. Just simply a probiotic is not necessarily only good for you. When you have too much lactic acid, guess what the balancing force for lactic acid, for those that don't even, those that, that read back, like, oh yeah, lactic acid poisoning, oh my God. Guess what the balancing force is for lactic acid? <gasps> Salt. When someone has too much lactic acid buildup in their body, like runners, when all that lactic acid comes out in their muscles, they're just like, ugh. Salt is the balancing force. Actually, electrolytes are the balancing force. That's why J-juice is so revolutionary is because it has all the right elements balancing each other out. And then it goes into your body balancing everything else out. Okay, so just probiotic by itself, no, because I'm not trying to have you go and ferment grains in water, okay? I'm not going towards the yogurts, the milks, because that has a high amount of sugar and other types of stuff. We're not pairing this with, with vinegar or any fruits. We're not making kombuchas, okay? This is utilizing cabbage and kale, and if you're allergic to kale, then just stay with cabbage. Maybe down the road, you might not be allergic to kale, but kale has a lot of vitamins. If you're sensitive to kale, okay, it means that you probably need to take it because it's more nutrition, but you know what? Do the cabbage, and then, you know, hopefully you'll get most of your issues reversed, and then you can do kale down the road, okay? But the, the lactobacillus, the probiotic is paired with, of course, water, with the right salt, pink Himalayan salt, and then, of course, the cabbage or the kale. Okay? So that's why it's not just, gen it's not just probiotic by itself. It is paired with the right elements because, yeah, you know, I mean, have you ever seen anybody see any rapid healing from eating yogurt. And they say that women can douche with yogurt to get rid of yeast infections. And yeah, that's good for just symptomatic type of stuff. But the real deep healing you're not going to get from yogurt. Okay? So, yes, there's beneficial bacteria in some foods, but the amount of beneficial bacteria and what it's paired with is the difference. That's the difference. And that's why J juice is revolutionary. And that's why it goes over most people's heads because they don't understand even fermentation. I didn't understand fermentation until I learned it. And that was my experience in the holistic market. So if you've ever explored the holistic market, then you would know you would have run across fermentation. And I study the holistic market like the back of my hand the last couple of years. And all of most of you, well, not all of you, some of you have seen this journey from way back before I even started JJ's. And then when I was um, in all these holistic groups, the main, the main concepts that were being put out there was that candida was one of the biggest issues and that coconut oil was like the end-all be-all. Is, is it necessary to keep juice in the fridge during the winter? No, you don't have to. I just say it as, a, as a, an overall, you can keep the juice out forever, Catherine. You can keep the juice, juice out forever. Just mix and stir. Okay? Temperature, yeah, I mean, as long as the solids aren't going above the brine, because that's how mold happens above the brine, because all of the um, lactobacillus and the brine and the juice is what kills the pathogens. So I'm going to make a comparison, okay, Catherine, so you understand this. When somebody has so many yeast in their body, like 
so much yeast and so many pathogens and and uh, parasites and they're only taking a little bit of of the juice just a little bit and they're so full of cancer and they're so pathogenic taking a little bit of juice is not going to make a difference it may kind of help them a tiny bit but they're not going to see rapid healing that's what the whole sauerkraut thing is you're not going to get major results from sauerkraut and so you see the whole thing with with fractional proportions if you have 75 percent pathogens and 25% of good stuff, guess what's going to win out? The pathogens. So when you look at the juice, Catherine, okay, so you have the juice and all of the, um, the brine and everything, anything under the brine, that's all lactobacillus and the salt and the minerals and all of that. And then you have like a tiny layer of, I would say, a little bit of mold, maybe a little bit of yeast, but mold, okay? Well, like I say, scoop it off the top and throw it out. Sometimes I mix it. I don't care. Um, but that little bit of pathogenic mold on the top is, is going to be nothing because you have so much of the good at the bottom <clears throat> below the brine that it's going to overshadow the bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So anyway, so I got segue there. <clears throat> So yeah, so back when I was in the groups, um, the main thing was it was the candida. <clears throat> and so with the candida, I was then studying all the different fermentation stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, God. Sometimes I just have to get this out. So I was studying all the different fermentation. And so when you're in the holistic world and you're going and exploring all the different things, you're always going to, you're, you're going to be hitting up against fermentation. So there are people that have not at all explored the holistic world at all whatsoever. So they have no idea the benefits of the right fermentation. No idea. So this thing about good bacteria and bad bacteria, totally over their heads. You know, they hear about probiotics, but they don't know what it is. They think it's only made in a lab, but they don't realize that probiotics is something that you can make in nature, but it's the right type is what the difference is. So, so yeah, and then I was first fermenting pickles and then that was just too much and it was always, ugh, it was just gross. And then I did the carrots and no, carrots have too much sugar. So that was a no, no. And then finally I went to the cabbage and then I upped the salt dosage and guess what? See, here's the thing, you know, here's a, here's a, here's a revelation. Try, I wonder if there's a point and I don't have an electron to, to test and look and all this stuff, but I wonder if there's a point when it and it's too salty for the lactobacillus to to live. And I don't know what that point is, okay? Because I got my stuff tested, you know, back when the Ohio Attorney General wanted me to go and substantiate. I took my three-day ferment, took a little jelly jar, stuck some ferment in there, the cabbage and the kale ferment, sealed it, sent it off to the lab, paid the $100. They tested it, 13 million colony forming units. So I'm wondering if some were to put, someone were to put two tablespoons of, of salt in two cups of water with the cabbage and the kale, I bet you, I bet you, there would be lactobacillus growing because I think the nutritive element, which is the cabbage and the kale is what allows. Yes, it does. I mean, obviously you can't grow lactobacillus with salt water. You can't, but what creates the lactobacillus in that environment is the nutritional properties. So that's why you get lactobacillus come out of um, the fruit because there's nutrient nutrient properties in the fruit. And there's some nutritional properties in the in the yogurt or in the milk. Not all of it is, but that's why lactobacillus acidophilus gets created in milk. But really the best way to pair the probiotic, the lacto fermentation is with the salt. Because salt and sugar, see this is interesting, salt and sugar both both white substances 
that dissolve in water that the body needs salt and sugar and so there is a pattern on a pattern well, as a pattern that you need salt and sugar we can't demonize sugar we need salt and sugar but we need the balance of it and they both allow lactobacillus to thrive now you take too much of the sugar side of it okay making lactobacillus off the sugar side of it yes it's going to feed your cancer Okay, because you have yeast that feeds off of off of sugar. So that's an interesting revelation there, is that, yes, the salt and the sugar that your body needs, but it has to be a balance, and you probably need way, well, I don't even want to say you need way more salt and sugar, because in our food supply, fruits and vegetables and the carbs and the grains and all that our diet is mostly simple sugars, processed sugars, and fruit sugars. But the body, but you're not dying from it. It just you have to keep a balance. So that's why I say, you know, when you are, when you are, um, when you're doing the J juice, when you're doing the J juice, and you finally get your healed and sealed, you don't have to stick with just fruit sugar. Okay, you can have a piece of bread. You can have all the different carbohydrates that are out there. You know, you can have the the pastries and the croissants and all of that. Okay, and then you followed up with J juice, you're not going to then reap the negative benefits like a person or negative benefits, the negative consequences like a person who is diabetic. So even though sugar by nature isn't white, it doesn't matter. Your body will still process it, and then you will still balance your body out with the J juice, and it will still utilize that sugar, whether it's the natural sugar or it's fruit sugar or white sugar or molasses, the body will still work with it. It'll filter out any negative properties and then take any beneficial properties and disseminate it and work accordingly. Okay? Because as long as I'm balancing out my sugar, whatever it is, whether it's processed sugar or natural sugar, that's why I don't want you to be too focused on just the natural sugar, Kevin, that to understand balance. Because if processed sugar was that poisonous, then it would be have to be controlled but it's only poisonous to what relative to what a person brings to the table so if you are very mutated and you're sensitive to sugars and processed foods then yeah it's going to be poisonous to you but once you get your body well balanced you can be exposed to all that and you wouldn't have to discriminate against it see when you discriminate it's because you're mutated that's what discrimination is that's what you have to understand, all you guys, is that when you discriminate against somebody or something, it's from a mutation because you have an understand balance. And balance comes from education. It really does. Balance comes from education. But in the interest of Kevin showing people the differences between processed sugar and fruit sugar, hey, that's fine, show the differences. But in the bigger picture, in the bigger picture of our life, okay, um, we don't need to discriminate. We just need to know how to, how to achieve balance. But you have to discriminate in the beginning to then achieve balance. So if you discriminate you know, on this end of the spectrum, then you gotta go and discriminate on this end of the spectrum, and then finally, finally you realize your body does, your biochemistry does, and you will then finally achieve the balance in between. And then Kevin says, yep, that's true. It only takes more molecules to break down departing, depending on the type of sugar. Eventually, the end result will be your micro break down the sugar and use it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're. I tell you what, I had 16 pot stickers yesterday, <laughs> okay? That was a lot. 16 pot stickers, holy crap. And my body got rid of it really really fast and I feel great and it took what it needed from it and then let the rest of it go and you know and I didn't even take my juice yesterday I'm probably take a sip of it today but I'm finally now you know I mean I'm dealing with the mutations I know <laughs> Kevin what are you going wild for <laughs> yeah 16 pot stickers judge me judge me <laughs> they were good okay 
I deserve them. So anyways, but no, you know, it's like, you know, you'll deal with the mutations. You'll deal with the mutations, and, and, and mutations happen in different ways, you know? They, they do. Mutations happen in different ways. And you will deal with the mutations, reverse them. <laughs> yeah, there weren't half. There were a whole. Where, the town that I live in here, the giant, you know, where I used to live, I love the giant eagle where I used to live because they always have these great pot stickers. But over here, they were all out, and there was this Chinese restaurant that had them, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to eat them. I'm going to eat some pot stickers. And so I did. So anyway, so yeah, that was my treat because it was just been a, a, a rough couple days, last couple days. But um, but yeah, I mean, balance is key. Balance is key. And it's not about only being positive. <laughs> it's not about only being positive. It, and about, it's not about only being loving because that's an imbalance. When you're only coming from positivity and love, that's also an imbalance. You have to have a certain amount of negative elements to then repel the negative elements that are out there. You must. You can't always come from uh, being positive all the time. Sometimes you have to be stand your ground. You really do. Now, what the hell are pot stickers? What they are is it's a type of wrap. Okay, it's like a doughy wrap that has either some minced up meat and cabbage and carrots and spices, and it's either steamed. Like, it's like dim sum. If you go to like, I've been to Southern China and it's dim sum. They're, they're little um, dumplings. That's how, that's the best way to explain it. They're dumplings. They're Asian dumplings. And they're so good. It's not USA worm food. It's like, it's Asian. It's really good. Oh my God. I say the, when I was in China, yeah, dim sum. When I was in China, man, that was probably what they ate the most. Yeah, was, was the, was the, the Asian dumplings, the pot stickers, and then I didn't do the chicken feet. I don't get chicken feet, but um, but then of course the rice, and then then you have yeah, it's just all little little dishes. Dim sum. I love dim sum. We don't we don't have dim sum down over here in Canada. I have to go all the way to Cleveland if I want to get big city, big city type of uh, food. I mean that's one of the downsides of being in the rural Midwest is that you don't have a lot of diversity in the food supply as far as ethnic foods but i get enough of it you know to satisfy me but i do miss san francisco food right kevin right right i only started to gain healthy weight as soon as i started to eat more rice also known as carbs so you're totally right first balance the body then take in more carbs yeah yeah it's um and that's why this diet is so temporary it's discriminating you know for a little bit, because you're already discriminatory now, right? You still got to discriminate. You got to be discriminatory in like the right context, the r and there were the wrong context and the right context, and then there's no more discrimination. Okay, no more discrimination. And so that is what we're achieving now in this society is that we're now trying to achieve where we eradicate discrimination of any type, because we're all working from a balanced perspective. The reason why we're discriminating is because there are so many imbalances and we don't even know what is right or wrong. And if you're already mutated, you're going to discriminate against somebody that is either mutated or not mutated because you don't understand them. But who or how would you know? You know, so people, people just make their, you know, people have their opinions based upon their mutations and then their discrimination and, and their, that's what it is. Instead of just repelling them and staying away from them, no, People are actively discriminating against each other. So that's why balance is so important. That's why, you know, I say first, do the J-Juice. Stay away from all of your holistic type of stuff. If you have to do your prescription drugs, great. But really just try to do the J-Juice as much as you can. If you have to manage your healing symptoms, utilizing some types of, like I guess, sound therapy or breathing therapy or talk therapy I guess you know it, it's all in moderation because too much therapy because therapy is antibiotic itself by itself but too much therapy can throw the balance off but you want to have a balance to where when you're dealing with the healing symptoms the pain isn't so great where it becomes unbearable and then quality of life goes down you know your, your quality of life is already compromised anyways but you know you have to heal you know you have to face it so you know, find the best way, 
find the best way. Because really the specific measurable result in all of this, the specific measurable result with J-Juice is the fact that you see the reversal in the aging process. When you see reversal in the aging proce process, it means that all of your cancer disease and chronic illness have been addressed. I'm not saying reversed. I'm not saying cured. I'm not saying managed. When you actually reverse the aging process, you would have already addressed every single issue you have in your body. Oh, Katherine Kruger. Uh, you have just given me a great insight into lactic acid and muscles. I needed to hear this part. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink the J-juice. Soak your muscles. If, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I would say keep your exercise at a minimum. Really, keep your exercise at a minimum because, you know, I don't even need to, need to exercise now. I maintain a relatively even weight and... Um, I maintain a really at a relatively even weight and that I don't really need to build up and create muscles. Okay? I really don't. Uh, I guess if I wanted to sculpt my body and have like a 20 pack, but what that does is is when you do mutate your body into a specific way to look aesthetically pleasing, it does break muscles down. So that's why, you know, while you're healing, try not to tax your body too much. Okay, um, be gentle to your body. And then down the road when you finally achieve balance, then yeah, go you do what you do. I mean, I know Kevin most likely will write something down the road with uh, working out and how do you incorporate working out and building up muscles and incorporating J-juice so you can have the best of both worlds. Most likely that'll be his focus on the males. And I'm sure females also will come into play in that too. I don't have any experience in that, so I'm not probably going to write about it, but that'll be Kevin's area. So yeah, you know, we're looking more books from Kevin because he has a wide expanse of knowledge that he can offer to all of you. So interesting, Kevin. There you go. See, there you go. But, um, but anyways, yeah, so do what you got to do. You know, when you're on JGS, do what you got to do. You know, if you have to use CBD oil on J, if you have to use anything that's antibiotic, okay. I mean, it's not like it's it's going to totally undermine everything that you're doing because some of you have very aggressive issues that are very painful, and you just have to do what's best, what works for you. But just get J juice in there. But know that it is about how much of J juice are you drinking. You know, if you're only doing two cups a day, well, and you have so many mutations, then I don't know how you're going to get healing and how, what you're going to see. Because if you're doing two cups a day and that's it, and you're not really doing waterfalls, then um, then it's like you'll get bored of the process and you'll think it's not working. That's why I say be more aggressive than not, because that way you'll see the, pro the progress faster. See, those that nurse J-Juice will get bored with this and be like, well, why am I torturing myself, you know, drinking two cups a day and I don't really see that many results or I see a little bit, but it's not enough to worth, you know, to warrant me doing this every single day. Cause I'll tell you what, when I do a lot, like I don't do waterfalls every day. I don't drink J juice every day. Okay. So, you know, sometimes I'll do like a quart in just one sitting. See when my husband, he wants to mix it with his smoothie I'm like, you're torturing yourself because now you're, the smoothie is so slow and so thick and the J-juice is in there. So why don't you just take like, you know, a cup or two, shoot it, and then drink your smoothie right after as a chaser. Why torture yourself with a little bit of J-juice and a lot of smoothie? You know? So, so yeah, get the waterfalls because that's autophagy. See, that's what we need to call waterfalls. Kevin, we need to call waterfalls autophagy. We really, so, Kevin, if you talk about waterfalls, can you do slash autophagy? Because that's what it's doing. It's purging out the disassembled, mutated cells out of your body, releasing the antibodies. Okay? That's what it's doing. It is autophagy. When, you know, when, when somebody takes a poison and the body pulls the 
electrolytes from the body, so it's depleting its electrolyte sources and takes the water from the body to get rid of the poison, that's another form of autophagy. But when you're bringing in electrolytes, the water is the carrier force and then the salt as the energizing force. Then you have the lactobacillus that keeps the cancer at bay. Then you have the nutrients in the cabbage and kale that's broken down to pre-digested state that disseminates all your different hormones. You're actually bringing in those elements that the body is also releasing, inducing autophagy. Autophagy, autophagy. That's a form of autophagy is the waterfalls. That's how we have to then, Kevin, that's how we have to then describe waterfalls so people get it. Yeah, great Wiggins, it really is. Because autophagy works from, yes, there are different types of autophagies. There's a very like small autophagy in your, like in the, in the, in the cells of your body, like the little individual micro cells you can't even see, right? And then you have your body as a whole, like your organs and your whole person is also inducing autophagy. Fuck yeah. See, that's the revelations from my, from this. Thank you, Gray Wiggins. That is, that is the revelation. When I'm talking, see, when I talk on Facebook Live, I give myself ideas. This is why I do what I do is because this is how we're able to get information out faster is when we go bounce, bounce, bounce back and forth and we keep repeating the same information, but yet how do we say it in a different way so people get it? So it's not being confused with other terms out there. That's one of the hardest things about this is how do you say the same thing in a different way and bring together all the research that's been done in the last couple of years through the Jilly Juice process. So yes, waterfalls are, waterfalls is autophagy, waterfalls are, waterfalls are autophagy. Fuck yeah. So now the science people will get it. It's going to go over the heads of the people who have not done any kind of science. It's really going to go over their heads. They'll be like, what? She's stupid. Oh, my God. I don't care. Those that understand autophagy, autophagy will understand what waterfalls are doing in the context of J-Juice. It's brilliant on all of your ends. And I learned autophagy a couple years ago. Not a couple. Yeah, a couple months ago. Every month seems like a year for me, okay? So... See, I like it when I have these clear revelations. So yeah, I had a cathartic moment the last couple months or last couple, last couple days. I'm now very clear in my endeavors on what I am going to be doing for the future. And I just had a revelation right now as we're speaking. I feel I feel very calm. My gut feels very strong. My, my desk is clean. My dog is sleeping. My husband is pursuing his dreams with his CB radio stuff. <laughs> oh, I love my husband. He's so funny. I love my husband. He's so funny. And, you know, Kevin is doing what his dreams are. You guys are on here learning all this stuff and contributing and giving me your hormones to bounce off of because even with my little six viewers that I have, it's great. Or I have might have more, I don't know. Um, we are definitely going to be making a dent in the education of humanity. Good job, Kevin. Okay, so you want to put that out there. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm so happy you got fired too, Kevin. I'm so happy. And Kevin already has the situation figured out and set up to make sure that this will get done. And I'm going to make sure that you guys are going to, yeah, I'll make sure a lot. So don't worry. I have my own duties to do. I have my own stuff I got to do. And so I'm, I'm working on all that. And that's what I plan to do today. Good job, Kevin. You know, I'll always back you and support you. 
in some way. My husband's saying like, oh, we can help him out. I'm like, honey, we got, we got bills to pay. <laughs> we got a lot, we got a lot of bills to pay. You know, if Kevin's in dire straits, we could try, but I'm thinking Kevin's going to be okay. But that's my husband. That was his go-to was like, Hey, can we, is there a way to help him out? I'm like, I guess if he, if it comes down to it, but I don't think, you know, right now we have a lot of bills to pay. <laughs> so we can't really support two households. Um, but I, you know, I think Kevin, you'll be okay. But that was my husband. My husband was concerned about you, Kevin. I just want, I just want to let you know he was concerned about you. You know, we we can send you a bunch of potatoes. <laughs> you could probably live on potatoes and J juice. Okay. <laughs> um. So, anyways, yeah. Kevin wouldn't put himself in a position to where he's starving on the street. He's not that dumb. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to just give you guys a hey, what's up? Letting you know where my head's at. Definitely a far cry from a couple days ago. Um, you saw the cathartic moments that I dealt with. <laughs> hey, good job, Kevin. Aha, not necessarily actually save money. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yes, my husband projects. He definitely does project. <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah, so, so you saw that I've been going through uh, my own, I, I've been going through my own healing process and Sometimes you need to just speak your voice, speak your mind. It's not always going to come out perfect. It's not always going to to be um, diplomatic. Sometimes you just have to call a spade a spade. Okay? Sometimes you have to do that. And then you realize, okay, that was a little emotional. That was a little, okay, was that constructive? Well, it was in, a, in, a, in such a way. It needed, you know, needed to happen. And then now you go about it in a different way, in a more strategic manner. Sometimes you need to emote. Sometimes you need to vent. And then once you do that, you repair the mutation. Because what happens is a mutation happens. A mutation happens, okay? So a pathogen enters into your world. You get mutated. Hormones. Hormones then get created. See, hormones are the are the, the things that get created when you're under stress or when the body is trying to survive or when the body is, is repairing itself. And so when uh, an event happens, hormones get created, you emote, and then you heal, and then your body hopefully has enough nutrients to then reinforce, reinforce your cells to then repair the damage and then make you stronger and then you start taking on more knowledge you start thinking a bit slower not so fast because you're reactive you start really being methodical in your approach and so that is the beauty of J-Juice is the fact that you can now be methodical in your approach when you're trying to achieve a goal whatever it is and so that's one of the major just that's one of the current things I just did today or yes get the last couple of days was that my body went through a major healing symptom autophagy I induced autophagy and not so much like the waterfalls but I needed to to fix that mutation and fix the mutations from past. Now, Kevin, remember how it was so it hurt my 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 head to to have these on, and I it just my head was so sensitive. Yeah, that was the body reacting and dealing with pushing out all of when I couldn't sleep. I was on adrenaline, like everything was sensitive. But see, now I can wear these headphones and I have no problem. See, that's crazy. But the other day, trying to wear these headphones, I was just like, ah, oh, this is hurting. This is hurting. Oh, my God. But now it's just like, it's not tight at all. See, that's weird. Kevin's like, yeah, you should get some, you know, featherweight type. So, you know, I was going through a biochemical change the last couple of days, a major biochemical change. 
And I had to go get stuff done yesterday. I had to go do a lot of these errands and all that. And I didn't really want to, but I had to because the things had to get done. And trying to do errands and I, ha you know, ha haven't slept in like, you know, really good for the last couple of days and da da da. But you can still, when you're, when you're going through the healing stuff and you can still get some of your stuff done, it won't be done in the best manner. Because I'll tell you what, I was just, I was almost delirious talking to the grocery guy, talking to the Chinese guy at the restaurant, talking to the guy at the post office, you know, and I'm just like, wow. And finally I was able to sleep, went home and just crashed. And now I feel amazing. I still got up at three this morning, <laughs> took a shower. I'll probably go to bed early tonight, but, um, but I got to get some stuff done today. But it was, you know, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and say, hey, this, this is what's going on. Okay. So you guys will be going through your healing. Some, some of you won't even know why you have these crazy dreams. So you're going to have crazy dreams. Your biochemistry is going to be shifting. It means your hormones are going to be shifting. You'll have crazy dreams, good dreams, bad dreams, whatever. Some of them will tell you that you'll be needing to deal, deal with stuff. And so when you have a bad dream, it tells you that something in your world is amiss. Write down your dreams. Sometimes you'll have the best dreams. You'll have dreams of where you're flying or dreams of colors, dreams of you know, flying over beautiful geographical lo locations. Enjoy this process. This journey is amazing. Enjoy it. Okay? Don't discount it. Don't avoid this process. Because I'm still not 100% healed. I have no idea what it's like to be 100% healed because I still am seeing more benefits more and more and it seems like the more the healing that i'm having are from the mutations that happened like a year ago two years ago so i'm dealing with now with the more current mutations it seems like the deeper seated mutations that happened to me way back in the womb or when i was a kid have already been dealt with cool kevin okay so when you start seeing yourself heal from just like a year or two ago from things that happened to you a year or two ago you know you're going down the right path okay so this is this is profound super profound don't avoid the healing don't just be conservative with the j juice try to see if you can induce autophagy with the waterfalls that's the revelation for those who just joined, is that waterfalls are basically autophagy. Purging out the disassembled cells, purging out the mutated cells, purging out the pathogens. So that way those that understand science and chemistry and biochemistry can understand what then waterfalls are. Because diarrhea has a horrible connotation and it has a negative connotation that it has does not fit within the context of J-Juice. Waterfalls are autophagy. Now, if I just said autophagy, people wouldn't understand. They're like, okay, what does that mean? Because autophagy is like a very general type of description of what cells do. But what type of cells? what groups of cells because your body like you you are a body of cells your organs are a body of cells your systems are a body of cells you can have autophagy, autophagy happen at the most at the cellular level all the way to the body level that's what waterfalls are is that all your cells are purging at the same time <laughs> they're all purging in concert <laughs> Okay, so that's a revelation that we just discovered here on Facebook Live. You got to see it. All right, you guys have an amazing day. I'm going to go replay this. Check my email to see if my stuff is coming. Oh, good. There's my husband. Okay. He's like, yes, I'm here. Good. All right, and then uh, you guys just enjoy, enjoy your weekend.
really do. And thanks. Enjoy your evening if it's if it's already in the evening. And you guys enjoy what you're doing. Okay. Oh yeah, Kath, that's right. It is it is night over there. Yeah, Catherine, good night to you, and thanks for that question. I'm glad to help you out. You're new on my Facebook, and I kind of I know you're kind. I looked at your background a little bit, so I'm glad that this is something that's going to help you out. And Kevin, hey, dude, you're epic. You're epic, dude. I tell you, Kevin and I have been through a lot of crap. We've been through a lot of crap. He's like my little brother. So I give uh, Kevin a lot of credit, a whole lot of credit. And the fact that he's still stuck around, even when I'm yelling at everybody and yelling at everything because I'm having a rant and my critics think I'm breaking up or crumbling or whatever. No, I'm going through a healing process. And you all will be going through the same thing too in different ways. I just happen to do it publicly. All right? But just don't discount it. Don't beat yourself up, beat yourself up over it and enjoy the process. And then achieve your goals. Make sure that you get a great return on that investment because there's no point in tapping into your hormones without having it give you a great return. Okay? All right, Jilly Juice, J-I-L-L-Y, J-U-I-C-E dot com, and get the book, and then we'll send you a login and password if you send us an email with the receipt. Okay, bye. Uh, okay, oh, there we go. Oops. And. Eh.